Here is a commercial Kawasaki lawnmower and it's got a motor problem. It's running fine, but these engines are kind of unique and they have an unusual problem. <coughs> it's hard to see till I get the plastic cover off, but to split the crankcase open and get inside to all the piston and connecting rod and crankshaft workings, you actually take the top off the motor. So to service the motor, you don't even have to remove it from the deck. It's so nice. I wish all lawnmowers were like that. I can get everything out after I take the head off. Well, it's on, on the thing and attaches by taking off the top. So, that's the problem. They broke the upper base gasket. Well, I guess it's not a base gasket anymore. And that blows the oil all over the cylinder area. And the cooling fins, that collects dirt, that helps overheat the motor and burn up the rings. So of course I've got some rings and head gasket because I have to take off the head. So I'll show you how this works. Simple. So it was super simple to remove the plastic cover, then the metal cover, then the flywheel bolt. Now I put the flywheel bolt back in after getting that off and put it in most of the way. I've pounded a claw hammer underneath the top of the block and the flywheel to put tension to try to pry it off. See what I mean? But not too hard. You don't want to crack the plastic block. I mean the aluminum block. Now I hit it here and the flywheel should jump off. Sure did. Simple as that. Now just to remove all these perimeter bolts around here and we can get inside. So now that all the bolts are out, you just lift this cover right off and get inside. So as you can see, the easiest motor ever to repair and rebuild. Now if you do have to take your camshaft out, there's the two little dots you'd have to reline up again to make it right. This little counterweight actually moves a little bump that extends the lift of the exhaust lobe to push the push rod so when it's running at a low RPM it opens the exhaust valve a tiny bit more, bleeds off compression so it's easier to start and then as soon as it starts running fast this moves over and moves that little raised bump in and the cam works just normal. It's a better idea than some engines have because some engines just have an extra bump on the camshaft to release exhaust pressure or I mean compression but that actually loses a tiny bit of power. This method doesn't. Now to get the head off. Well, couldn't have been easier. Four bolts holding the head on, four bolts holding the rocker cover on, and two bolts holding the carb on, and the head is off. Like I said, it was burning oil. It needs re-ringed. Look at those combustion deposits from burning oil all around that spark plug. But everything else looks good. Let's check the cylinder. Not the greatest, but those are narrow grooves, and I can just barely feel them with my fingernail. So I'm going to run the portable honing tool that I just use with my electric drill and score up the cylinder a little bit so the new rings will break in and seat pretty well, and that should take away the oil burning and bring compression back to almost normal. This engine was still running. Now to remove the connecting rod bolts, but before you do this in any engine, you put a little scratch or something to mark so you can always put the rod cap back on as they're a machine set and they only go on one way some engines they only can go on one way and some they don't so since you don't know till you take it apart mark it first and there's lots of room to get in there and do that well that was too easy again so check the surface that it's not scored and that looks perfect and now just shove out the piston. Oops! Check that your wrist pin retainer clips are in good condition and still nice and springy. These are. Piston's in great shape. This part of the connecting rod is perfect and not scored. And I took off the top compression ring and put it back in the cylinder just to show you how much wear is on the rings. That gap should only be about five thousandths of an inch. Right now it's probably sixty thousandths of an inch. 
So I've wetted my deglazing stones with some diesel. Now I'm going to get some of my fingers and wet the cylinder. You shouldn't use oil because oil sort of plugs up all your cutting stones. Now I just stuck it in there by hand. The idea is to have the drill running at a slow speed with your variable speed drill, but go in and out very quickly while trying to hold it in center. Do you get it looking kind of clean in there, but don't expect to get all the scratches out. That's what reboring is for. Burning. Like that. Try not to hit the crankshaft when you're going in and out. It's a bit tough. That's a good feed. Okay, you can see by the silvery color we've done a bit of metal cutting. So let's wipe her out and see if we've done a good enough job yet. That's actually good enough. You can't actually get all the wear that the top ring made because the stones cut this top edge too, which is unworn. If you have the grape uh, deglazing tool with all the little balls on wires that looks like a grape cluster, it can get in that spot too. If you want, you can get a little bit of medium sandpaper and scratch that up just a bit. Now I've cleaned it all off and I've actually put some motor oil back on for reassembly. You always don't put your piston back in in a dry cylinder. So when putting your rings back on, you always put the wiggly oil ring separator thing back in first on the bottom groove. Then you put the two oil rings back in. The, these are called wiper blades, pretty much. They wipe the oil off the cylinder wall so there's not excessive oil. And you make sure that grooves are spaced sort of oppositely and not near the groove on this thing either. And of course, if the two rings are different, like one's got chrome around the edge, the chrome one is always the top one for the compression ring. And some have little notches and stuff on them, so if they do, there's usually a little dot on the top side of the ring so make sure the dot is visible from that side when you put the rings on. So oil ring is assembled of course the bottom wiping ring goes on first then the second one and now you put the next rings on of course this one next but you don't expand them to put them on you bend one edge down hook it in the groove and then sort of peel it on around expanding them can actually snap them like this stick it in the groove move it over and then just peel it down around. On some engines, especially two strokes, there's a lot of carbon in the ring grooves. Always check that before you put your rings back on. Sometimes the rings still seem to go on the same but you can't get your piston back in the hole because the carbon is stopping the ring from compressing enough. Then while trying to tap it back in the hole with your ring compressor you can actually break the rings. So you take an old ring, break it in half, and use that as a clean out tool by taking it in there and scraping the grooves out. If you do have carbon on this top land area, it's actually best not to remove it. That helps seal the engine and reduce oil burning. Now I have a ring compressing clamp that I can slip my piston into, tighten, and it squeezes all the rings down to a nice favorable size so they fit back in the hole. If you don't have one of these, the redneck replacement is just a big hose clamp that goes around there, just like you would use on your hoses on your cooling system on your car or something like that, like one of those little worm drive stainless steel clamps. But you never put them on too tight because the piston still got to be able to slide out of it when you put it back in the cylinder. You can even do it with your fingernails sometimes very carefully if it's got a big chamfer like that and then just tap the back of the piston in with a hammer at the same time as you're squeezing the rings. Make sure you don't have all the ring grooves lined up in line. That loses compression. And you stagger them a bit. And you don't have them near here either. You always have them near where the skirts of the piston are. And you try not to have the gaps on the thrust side of the piston. That depends which way it's turning the crankshaft. Most of the force would be pushing that groove against the thrust side so you'd have them on the opposite side. So that just took a couple seconds to slip in. Of course, make sure it's in the right direction, not flipped the wrong way. And make sure it's not going to interfere with your crankshaft in any way while you're sliding it down the rest of the way to bolt it on. Now, once your piston's all the way in, wouldn't hurt to add a little more oil there. And 
lots of oil on the crank pin journal even up there too and the rod cap back on tighten it up to whatever the torque specs are supposed to be I don't use a torque wrench on any engine even if it's for a car or a bike I just got lots of experience and I've never had one let go that I've put back together rotate the crankshaft around a couple times make sure every spin thing spins freely without binding before you decide to reassemble the motor give one last check that your cam points line up so you know you're not going to go wrong and for sure it's going to start and be careful when putting your top cover back on because there's that little gear in there which drives the governor when the weights fly out and pushes on this and it's plastic and you want to make sure when it's dropping on that at least it drops down into the grooves and lines upright so it doesn't shear off the plastic teeth if you're forcing that cover on remove all oil and debris and gasket material off the head and this surface too so that your new head gaskets could uh, seal better and of course if you see lots of carbon clean that up and of course this thing needs a new spark plug too that's the governor thing I was talking about some engines of course have something that looks similar and it's the oil slinger that has to do with the oil pumping mechanism so new gaskets on and I just got to finish removing little bits of the old gasket it took a little bit of wiggling of the crankshaft back and forth to get that governor gear to line up but now the cover dropped back down safely and we're all set to put the bolts back in of course go back and forth and tighten them all down evenly in a couple stages key is back in now put the flywheel back on and make sure whenever you put a flywheel back on any engine it's very tight or the flywheel key breaks itself as soon as you start it now I'm going to put the head back on before attempting to put into the push rods that open the valves and when I do put the push rods in I can just move the rocker arms out of the way but unfortunately I'll show you how to do the next step to get the push rods on and maybe without even adjusting them okay I've got the head bolts all in so the head can move back and forth an eighth of an inch now if I pull the head all the way back leave the gap there I put the same push rod in the same place it originally came out so this was the top one and that end originally came out from that end and I slip it all the way in until it sits in the little pocket of the pusher thing which is like the lifter and when I get them in there I'll have to use two hands and shut the camera off and then I move my rockers over and I set them back on so they're touching them then I can tighten down the head and then when it's all properly torqued I can check my valve, valve clearance afterwards when it's set to TDC compression and see if I need to readjust the valves or not so it is already set to TDC compression so it's not trying to push the valves open when I'm going to put the head back on they're just sitting there the heads just sitting there and now it's ready to start torquing the head down then check the valve clearance after torque the head down to specifications in a crisscross manner and do it in about three stages so you can clamp it all down evenly they're torqued look at that horrible spark plug gee whiz it's hard to believe this thing was running when he brought it here just about to die I guess so now have to reinstall the magneto and you make it as close to the magnets as you can without actually touching them and it doesn't matter how rusty things are it works just as well that looks pretty damn close to me so do a full rotation to make sure there's no interference now watch your valves see what they're doing rotate it to TDC compression and of course that's going to be where the magnets are of course there's two different TDC's if it's not right the first time you just do one complete rotation so now I'm checking the gap and there's about feels like about 18 thou gap so that's excessive I don't know what it's exactly supposed to be but I think it's supposed to be somewhere between 5 and 10 thou gap this one's got a little less you know the ex 
So, if you have too much gap on your exhaust, then your compression release, which I showed you, doesn't work. So there's a little set screw in there. So you just hold the set screw and turn this a little bit, and that's how you adjust it. Same thing with the other one. Too tight, but then of course you burn out your valves or your motor might not start. Too loose, rattles and hammers and makes lots of noise when it's running. And sometimes I've even seen them so loose that the push rods fall out of the little pockets. So that's how I adjusted them, just with an Allen wrench and a regular wrench. Make sure just everything's snug before you put it back together, but not too tight. Those bolts aren't that strong. Cleaned off the debris around that gasket. It's still in good shape, so I'm going to reuse it. Put it back on and torque it evenly too. It wouldn't hurt even if you put a little bit of silicone around there. All right, that's on. Now don't forget when you put your carb on that that heat spacer separator gasket is still there. And make sure your PCV ventilation hose gets put back on the nipple so it doesn't blow oil all over the motor and make smoke in your face while you're pushing it. Air duct cooling cover thing on. And we have random cabbage. Hi, baby. Need a hug? Come on. Can I have a hug? Thank you. Meow. Aww. I hear you have a mad friend up there. A little goldfinch doesn't like you. Right? You're probably going to get swooped. <laughs> she sure does eat a lot of birds almost every day. <laughs> Usually bigger ones than that. But she, she did get one like that already. Well, back to business. So, before you put that thing on, you got to make sure you get all of this stuff cleaned off so your motor can run effectively cool. So you don't cook your engine, fry your rings, stuff like that. Pressure washer, but if you do that, you got to cover up this. Or compressed air, or a brush and solvent, whatever. So now final assembly. If you notice, the mounting tabs were broke off this heat shield or heat air duct cover. So I just welded washers on. So now we're ready to put the plastics back on and we're ready for a test. So she's all done. Less than two hours. I'm not sure if this lawnmower has any safety controls to start it. So I've just got it on choke and see what happens. And if it does start it should make some smoke because we still have lots of oil in that cylinder. Absolutely awesome. 